I play the part of Nick Edwards, who I wouldn't go so far as to say he's um he's a con man, but he makes his living in slightly dubious ways. The team of people that Nick uh, joins up with for the for the caper for the uh, scam, basically, uh, are a brother and sister. Um, the sister is Nick's initial. Uh, interest in that she's the barmaid in his local pub, uh, bar, that he's taken a shine to. And he discovers that the brother is a very talented artist, copy artist. Yeah. So he comes up with the idea that um, he could draw the five copies and then sell them with the help of the sister. Uh, unfortunately, the sister doesn't share the same feelings as Nick does for her. So uh, it um, creates some tension between the two, which resolves itself nicely. When I initially read the script, what I what I loved about it was the fact it was uh, like a return to the old Ealing Caper films, which I loved. I loved all those those old fashioned um, sort of crime capers, basically. And it was the kind of film I would want to go and see. It was the kind of film you could take anyone to see as well. Um, and yeah, it was a, it was a slightly different departure and the type of character for for me. I've never played anyone like Nick, uh, so that was a bit of a challenge. What I got excited about was the fact that um, it was a British film that wasn't making its own little art house film that 12 people and a dog would see. You know, it, Alan Parker said a few years ago, we need to get back to the commercial films, films that everyone wants to see. And I love that about this. It's quite unashamedly, not commercial, but a, a film that many people could enjoy. And I think, you know, the current state of the British film industry, it's about time we started making films again that are, are of this calibre, that are entertaining. Um, so I was, you know, very excited to read something like that. Richard James, and I hope he doesn't mind me uh, mentioning um, his youthful age, for his age, is an exceptionally mature director. Um, and I was, I've been very pleasantly surprised at how decisive he's been and uh, very clear on what he wants, um, which is rare in, you know, old directors, let alone first-time director. So it, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been an issue. It hasn't, I haven't felt like, oh, I'm going to work on a film that's with a first-time director because it doesn't feel like that. Uh, Favourite part of the film? Probably the credits. No. Um, Favourite part of the film? <laughs> Enjoyed most. I can tell you what I hated most: dancing. I hate dancing in general. So even the the, the few small steps I had to do in the time bar made me feel sick. Um, favorite part? It was like I'm not sure if it's favorite because it was tinged with sort of stomach churning fear. But being in the smart car, going at breakneck speeds with Kate Ashfield was was exhilarating, but um, scary. She likes to drive, doesn't she? Yeah, fast. Best thing I faked? Probably the uh, the conversation that got me this job, I think. It was funny, before when I got the, when I got this script and I read it and I sort of thought, all right, I bet they're looking for a, you know, cockney wheeler dealer. So for for the for, for about three days I was, was walking around giving it all that and then uh, and then I picked up the picked up the phone to him. The first thing he says, "What well, what the one thing I don't want is that sort of mockney cockney, you know, apples and pears wheeler dealer." I, 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 I know exactly how I feel. I didn't see like that at all. Saw so him was from Cardiff, about five ten, dark hair, blue eyes. <laughs>